to pray for our child's salvation. This is a very, very important aspect. God expects that we as individuals, as parents, would realize that that child needs to come individually and personally coming to know Christ as their personal Savior. We're a part of that process. We do it by praying for our child, and we do it on a consistent basis. Now, a number of you have children that have grown up, are in their 20s and 30s, and maybe older even than that, and, and they might not have come to Christ. Do not give up. Be persistent. Continue, continue that kind of prayer for every child that that person might come to know Christ as their personal Savior. We're to pray on a, a regular basis, a consistent basis for their salvation. We need to pray for the peer group that your child will be uh, playing with, will be going to school with. And, and one of, I think, the most powerful prayers that you can pray is that your child would at least have one strong Christian friend. That one Christian friend can make a world of difference in the life of your child. And where is that going to come? You pray about it. Pray about it on a consistent basis. Pray for God to protect your children. Pray that uh, your child will be saved from evil, be saved from suffering. Pray for your wisdom and for your discernment. Pray for, again, teaching moments. This is one of the things that Mary helped me very, very often. I'd be with uh, our two boys, and, and, and something would take place, and there could be a serious moment. And it was actually a teaching moment. And I would just miss it. I would just sort of be more interested in the task, let's go and do something. And, and so very, very often, there is this teaching moment the time when, when a word can be uh, addressed, a, a hug can be given, a kiss can be given, a, a sign of affection. And as a man, sometimes I miss these. I have to admit that. And that's, that's where our wives help us out. But let's pray for teaching moments with our children when it's a Holy Spirit moment so that uh, uh, we can have the benefit in, in that regard. Pray for wisdom. Pray for discernment. Then I would encourage you to pray with your children. Teach them how to pray. I'm hoping that in this church that all of us, when we have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, that we're a church that's praying grace, that we're simply, whether we're in a restaurant, wherever we are, that we're just simply bowing our head and thanking God for the food that is right before us. And you say, well, why should I do that? Because God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. We need to be a thankful people. And my friends, if you came with me to Haiti, or if you've been to Ethiopia and some of the other places that I've been, and you've seen the children and you've seen people starving to death, you would be thankful for whatever little food that you have on your plate. And we need to be a thankful people. And one of the ways that we can teach our children to pray is by, again, praying over the three meals that we have, not making it a theology lesson, not making it long, just simply saying, so, far, so often I just say, Father, I want to thank you for this food. I really appreciate it. And then I dig in. Well, the uh, next thing that uh, we need to do besides fervent prayer is to have biblical standards in our parenting. Biblical standards. And, of course, biblical standards are best lived out by a biblical lifestyle. Uh, I, uh, well, I was, I was going to give an illustration, but just to shorten the time, I, I won't do it. But the point is that the best way to teach God's Word is to simply to be in God's Word. The best way to, to direct your ch child to be a Christian is for you to be a Christian in all of your actions and in your behavior and in your lifestyles. Now, when we're talking about biblical standards, you need to agree as a couple as to your standards. See, parents need to have unity. Unity is absolutely paramount. Parents should complement each other. God has given you certain strengths and weaknesses as a couple. Find out what they are and work together as a team. Remember that children are experts as to finding out who is the easy touch in your family. So this is why you have to have standards. This is why you have to have agreements together. You should have standard agreements about some of the following things. As to discipline in your family. As to, again, who disciplines, what kind of a situation, what kind of degree, and really where discipline plays a role in raising the children. 
We also need to have biblical standards of recognizing the individuality of children. Uh, realizing that different children are just, uh, just act differently, look differently, and so forth. They can have the same parents, same DNA. Now, for instance, our two boys, they were adopted, so this illustration is a little different. But our two boys, they, I'm telling you, they were a, a night and day in reference to just being different. My older boy, okay, he liked school. My younger boy didn't like school. My older boy was into music like anything. My older boy couldn't sing a note. He couldn't play up. He couldn't do anything musically. My oldest boy thought he was the greatest athlete in the world, and he, couldn't, he just wasn't an athlete. My youngest boy didn't think he was an athlete, and he just had pure athletic ability. Uh, my oldest boy was, was sort of, um, just throw it anywhere and hope that it lands in the vicinity of uh, where it needs to be. My other boy would just simply put things away real and neat and so forth. Well, they had two individuals here in the same family, living in the same room, same house, and they were entirely different. Part of it being, of course, that they, they were adopted. Well, one of the things that I had to learn as a dad is how different these kids were. I can remember just a great time that Mary came to me when the kids were getting to be 13 and 14. And uh, she said, you know, Ron, ha have you thought of seeing Bill and Neil as different and begin, and begin to do some special things just with Bill and some special things just with Neil? And uh, just let it be between the two of you. And I thought, well, that sounds like a great idea. And, and she said, but then she said something I don't think was great, but I did it anyways. She said, let the boys decide. See, I really thought I should have, but anyways. She said, let the boys decide really what is going to be real special. And my oldest boy said, Dad, let's pick up golf. Now, I don't know if there's golfers out here, but I think it's about the worst sport in the world. And, and I couldn't believe it. And so I took up golf. And, and to this day, I am terrible at it. But anyways, it ended up being a very special, and I have a special relationship with my oldest boy because of golf. My youngest boy took, said, Dad, let's take up fishing. And to this day, I'm one of the world's greatest fishermen because I identified and I took up fishing with, with Neil. But the point was is that we separated them. We had special activities and, and did things. It was recognizing that they are different and sort of honoring them in that regard. That's one of the ways of having standards or separating things like I'm talking about. One of the standards that a family needs to have is a sense of respect. Respect is absolutely important in families, and uh, it is so missing. I was at Dunkin' Donuts about a couple months ago, and I was standing in front of a lady, and she had a young boy. And this uh, young boy, I, I don't know his name, I don't know his age, but he wasn't getting enough attention. So he decided to do something that makes sure that nobody here ever, ever thinks of doing. Now anyways, this little boy decided, because he wasn't getting enough attention, he would get up on the counter at Dunkin' Donuts and march around. Now, I don't know about you, but when I buy donuts, I don't really like to necessarily see this. And so this little boy got up... And he is just marching across. The manager came in and said, young man, you can't be there. And she said to the mother, have him step down. She grabbed him, put him down. I thought, well, that was a bad experience, but at least we got over it. Sure enough, that little kid was crawling up again. He started marching.